We are in a series called The Fruit of the Spirit, and today's message is called Roots and Fruits. Now, I've got my orchid here. My orchid's going to help us to demonstrate a, a, a few things here. And here's the deal. You guys have chosen this message because you guys are filling out prayer cards, prayer requests, and we take those things seriously. If you fill out a prayer request, we pray for it. And a lot of people are praying for peace, praying for patience, praying for kindness, praying for joy. A lot of people are praying for a lot of things which happen to be fruits of the Spirit. So I got to thinking, all right, I'll teach on fruits of the Spirit, but I can teach on joy, I can teach on peace, I can teach on love, I can teach all that stuff to you. But it, it, it's like, that's the fruit. But I, I thought, okay, it's, I can do that for you, but then what happens when things in life come and things try and steal your peace or steal your joy or, or steal all of those things? And that's where it dawned on me that it's not necessarily the, the fruit that matters, but it's the roots. In fact, if you want good fruit in your life, then you have to look at your roots. So let me use my orchid for an example here. Okay, I'm what you would call, or I'm a self-proclaimed orchid whisperer. How many people have gone to Woolworths and bought an orchid and it died five to seven days later? Okay, well, I had one honest person in the first service, but... Uh, orchids are hard for people to keep alive. Uh, I'm the orchid whisperer because I'm a bit OCD and I pay attention to everything in my life. And so I pay attention to the roots. Now, if I have healthy roots, then I have beautiful fruit. If I forget to water the plant or I fill it with water and never empty the water out, the plant will die. The roots are kind of finicky. But good fruit comes from good roots. Now, as you can see, my orchid is beautiful, and I've got one little bloom here that's getting ready to, to come out, um, and so I'm very excited about that. But I need you guys to understand this. Good fruit, love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, all those things that you want, that you pray for, that comes because you look at the roots. Now, here's the thing I want you to also think about. Take everything in your life, it, well, don't take like, you know, the clothes. Well, actually, you could take everything. The clothes you're wearing, the situations that you're in, your successes. What do you, what's been successful? Parenting, uh, friendships, finances, all that stuff. Then also, let's take your failures. You know, the things that you failed at. Uh, maybe a job, maybe finances, whatever. Take your successes, take your finances. Those right there, all of them, no matter what it is in your life, all of it has a root cause. There is a root cause behind every single success and every failure in your life. Let me explain this to you simply. Uh, Mr. Lindsay sits down here in the front row, who is like, who's my buddy. I love him. My favorite person. He's the only person in this auditorium that gets his own chair, uh, and he is incredible. Now, what I would say is a success is our friendship. When I go sit next to Lindsay when we worship, he tells me he loves me. He tells me that I did a good job. He tells me that, uh, that I, I, I'm, a, I'm a blessing. And he's speaking from the love in his heart. That is a fruit. But the fruit to that has a root cause. The root cause is the relationship that we have. It's the tenderness and the relationship where we work together on the roots so that we can experience the fruit. So every situation has a root cause. Now, the roots produce the fruit. Everything has a root cause. Everything. Everything in your life. Now, I want to explain to you between fruit and root, because I'm going to use those words quite a bit today in the message. Fruit is uh, intended to, uh, to, to mean the fruits of the Spirit. Love, patience, gentleness, kindness. And in Galatians, we're going to go over that at the end. We're going to just name the fruits for you. And the root, the root that we're talking about today, that's what's in here. That's what's in the soul. That's what's in the heart. Out of this comes everything else. Out of this comes your words. Out of this comes your thoughts. Your uh, addiction to pornography, root cause, something's wrong here. Your addiction to alcohol or wh whatever it is. Your anger that you have, 
All those things come from here. Your generosity, your kindness, your giving, your, even your tithe to the church here, that also comes from here. There is a root cause behind everything. Now, I've got good news for you. Here's great news, okay? The great news about this is that God the Father, the one that we say is the Savior of, every, you know, of, of the world here, the God the Father wants you to bear good fruit. So the fruit that you want in your life, God wants you to bear it. You want peace? God wants you to bear it. You want patience? God wants you to bear it. You want kindness? God wants you to bear that fruit. You want love, more love? God wants you to bear that fruit. God's desire is for you to bear it. That's if we were made in the image of God, God's desire is that you reflect on Him. He wants you to bear that. Well, let me show you where this is in the Bible. In John chapter 15 here, let's take a look at this. This is Jesus talking. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Let me talk about my son, uh, Benjamin. Now, when Benjamin, uh, as we teach him things, you know, we teach him kindness, uh, we teach him how to be patient, and uh, we teach him stuff. He's got this horrible habit of waking up at 5 a.m., I think I've spoken about this, and then coming up with excuses to go ahead and get out of bed. But he's got a light in his room that tells him when he can get out of bed. And before that light turns on, he can't get out of bed. And the other day, or maybe it was this morning, I can't remember, he wakes up. It was this morning, wasn't it? It says he got quick night, or he slept quickly. Yeah, so <laughs> this is my, uh, my wife sitting on the front. I rely on her to keep me on track here. She's the only one I do look at. So uh, I told Benjamin last night, I said, if you go to sleep and you stay in bed, and even after you wake up and you go, if you go back to sleep, then morning comes quickly. So all the things you want to do, you want to play, you want to do all that stuff, if you want it to come as fast as possible, then it comes, you need to sleep. So this morning he wakes up and he comes running in, Daddy, 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 which it's a sound that I absolutely love. He says, I slept quickly. That's the way he turned out. I, I, I slept quickly. He was so happy to tell me that. And I'll tell you what. I felt aversion, not glorified like God. But I felt, I felt glory. I felt glorified. I felt like the things that I'm teaching my son, oh, man, he's bearing much fruit, patience. He's bearing that. So if, if I feel that way because of my son, then imagine how much God the Father feels. You were designed for this. You were made to bear much fruit. We're going to refer to this verse you know, a, a lot later, that God's design was for you to bear the fruit that you're desperate for. Let me show you again where this is here, or, or kind of unpack this um, good fruit and bad fruit thing here for you. Okay, In verse 17 of Matthew 17 through 18, it says... Even so, every good tree, and you could use the word root for tree because trees have roots. Every good tree bears good fruit. Common sense so far, right? But a bad tree bears bad fruit, okay? Not complicated. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Also not complicated. Nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Okay, that makes sense to me. When I read that, okay, good makes good, bad makes bad. But then when I think about the way that we work in our society, I, I think, okay, we do a lot of things called masking, where we're a bad tree, and instead of showing that we bear bad fruit, we try and mask, we try and hide it. What, what that happens is you're living two personalities, you're living two lives. Here at church, you're trying to bear good fruit. Out there, you're trying to, uh, maybe you're not worried about it as much, you bear bad fruit. But it, 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 that's exhausting to live. And what God is telling us through this, what Jesus is saying, is that Jesus knows your heart. It is what it is. You're either good or you're bad. You're either bearing good fruit or bad fruit. What is the fruit? Peace, patience, love, kindness. Especially that kindness part. And here it's easy to be kind. You go home, you get on Facebook, especially all you Pinelands 531 Facebookers, all right? You get on Facebook, and turns out you're not a good tree. You're a bad tree. All right? It is what it is. Good makes good. Bad makes bad. 
Now, here's a verse that I love here, and I've got a, a great story to tell you about myself. So either the tree is good, and it's good fruit, or else make the tree bad, and it's fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. God's like, don't live in the middle here. Don't, don't live like a, a lukewarm life. Choose good or choose bad. But this word here, for a tree is known by its fruit, this, tree, uh, uh, this word here, known, is judged. This tree is judged for its fruit. So what, what, are you, what are you known for? When you walk into a room, what do people know you for? Do they know you for the kind person, for the loving person? Or do they know you for the person with the temper or the person with an anger? What is it that you're known for? Think about that. What's your reputation amongst your family, amongst your friends? And then, a great way to think about this is are you known for different things around different people? And if you are, that's okay, but you've got work to do. So I, I want to confess something to you. Uh, I am known for being here, uh, for here as a, I would say like a, a decent pastor, you know, and... Um, that's kind of what I'm known for here. But what I'm known for, let me tell you a story here. So uh, in the morning, I take my son to school. We leave at 6.30. If we leave Pinelands at 6.37, it takes two hours to get to Rondevosh. If we leave Pinelands at 6.30, it takes us seven minutes. So I see some of you shaking your head because you know and you understand. But on the way to school, because my son's been trying to put on weight, he's a rugby player, uh, he's an amazing player, uh, he's a monster out there on the field, and he's wanting to put on a bit of weight, and turns out he was never eating breakfast. So I was like, Leafa, you're basically like intermittent fasting, which is what people do to lose weight, like, you know, so we've got to get breakfast in you. So I started stopping at the petrol station next to Bishop's and Rondebosch. So there's the petrol station, Bishop's. Rondebosch. So we pull into that petrol station to get breakfast. Well, that petrol station is, is designed in such a way that the parking spots are on the other side of the pumps. And the only way you can get to the parking spots is if you drive through the pumps to get to it. You can't park on the side of the road because all the runners take up all those parking spots. And then there's only two in front of the ATM, and those are always taken. So I want to pull through the pumps, and I want to park. And I want to go in. I want to get Leafa his cheesy griller and his yogurt and his, uh, his wine gums. And I get me a bit of a, an energy drink and, we, and a protein cookie and we take off. That's what we get every single morning. But here's the thing. One of those pumps has been broken for a long time. Now that broken pump, they put a cone in front of it. There was a morning where I pulled in. I needed to get to a parking spot. There's a cone in the middle of the road. Everyone's getting petrol. Can't get through. So I, I open the door because I can't roll my window down. It doesn't roll down. Or if it rolls down, it's permanently rolled down forever. You know, right? <laughs> Who's got cardboard to hold their window up? You know, come on. Am I the only one here? All right. So if you guys would tithe more, I could buy a better vehicle. <laughs> you know, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. My wife is saying, keep going here. Okay, we did time. I got time limited. So anyway, uh, I, I opened the door and I asked them to move the cone. They don't move the cone. So guess what I did? I ran over it. <laughs> All right? I just ran over it and broke it. Get out of the car. Leafa's embarrassed. I look at Leafa. For those of you that don't know, Leafa's black. I'm not black. And I tell Leafa, I say, no one knows we're related. <laughs> just, just walk off to the side. You don't have to be anywhere near me. Just step off to the side. So a week later, I pull in. Same thing. Roll the window down because I'm in the van. Window goes down. And I say, hey, excuse me, can you move the cone? The guy looks at me. Just goes back to what he's doing. So guess what I did again? I ran over the cone, you know. And this time I, I broke the cone. I am known at this petrol station... <laughs> For not being a very kind person, not being a very nice person here, all right? That's, that's my reputation there. And I, I, I use that to, to tell you, you know, we are judged by what we're known for. And I'll tell you what, I'm known for that, but I'll tell you what's happening in my life. Is that there's areas in my life where I'm not tending to this. And because there's areas in my life where I'm not tending to this, I'm not producing the fruit and I, I confess that to you guys 
And it's, it is hilarious and it's funny, but at the end of the day, there's a patience and a kindness that I was missing on those two mornings because there's something not right with my fruit. So there's two different things that I think can really help us if we understand them. They can help us understand how to tend to our roots so that we can produce good fruit. So the first one is this. Jesus is the vine. He's the root. He's the ultimate vine, the ultimate root. Now let me show you where this is in Scripture here. Isaiah 11, 1. Then a shoot, the Messiah, will spring from the stock of Jesse, which is David, David's lineage, Jesus comes from, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. This is Isaiah, who is old, long gone, Old Testament, speaking about Jesus to come, speaking about the Messiah. Okay, 11 verse 10 here. Then in that day, the nations will make supplications to the root of Jesse, who will stand as a signal for the people, and his resting place will be glorious. That's heaven. He's going to rest in heaven. Isaiah 53, 2 here. For he, the servant of God, grew up before him like a tender shoot, a plant, and like a root out of dry ground. I mean, Jesus is the only root that comes out of messed up dry ground. He spent his entire life tilling soil. So, I want to show you two verses in Revelation. Revelations 5.5. 5. Then one of the 24 elders said to him, Stop weeping. He's talking about John. Look closely. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. That's Jesus. Revelations 22.16 says this. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you and give you assurance of these things for the churches. I am the root, the source of life. And the offspring of David, the radiant, bright morning star. How can Jesus be the source of life and the offspring of David? Because he came from heaven where he sat with God and he came as a man. And he came just like us as a person to walk this earth and die for our sins. That's how he can do both. Jesus is the root. I'm not using root as something clever. This is what the Bible says. Now the main verse that I want to teach out of for you this morning is John 15, 5. I love this verse right here um, because it's so clear. It's Jesus just flat out telling us this here. So let's look at it. I am the vine. So Jesus is talking. Jesus is the vine. I, I am the vine. You are the branches. So he gives himself an identity. He gives you an identity. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from the vital union for me. Think about a branch cut from a vine. It will die. You can do nothing. You know what's so interesting about this word, uh, nothing, is if you take nothing and you split it apart, it's no thing. So what Jesus is saying here is, if you're not connected to me, then you can do no thing. Some of, some of us are trying to do something, but you can do no thing. You're trying to produce fruit. You're trying to, to, uh, to increase your peace, increase your patience, your kindness. But if you're not connected to the vine, you're not connected to Jesus, you can do no thing. It's, it's, it says it right here. But look at the opposite of this. Look what happens when we say, okay, then what happens with Jesus? We turn to Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See the difference there? Now, this word, all things here, I can do all things through Christ. And when you break that down, you look at the, the original context in the Greek, it's I can do all things which he has called me to. And what was the first, one of the first verses we read? That God's desire is for you to bear much fruit. You were called to bear fruit. And with Jesus, you can do all things. So with Jesus, all things. Without Jesus, no things. How do you go from nothing to all? It's Jesus. He's the, he's the jump. He's what allows you to do that. Now, I, I want to kind of pick John 55 or 15, 5 apart for you a, a little bit here. And in verse 5, Jesus starts out and he says, I am the vine. Now, when you break this down, and here's why I want you to know this. I always ask myself the question, like, why does this matter to you guys? It matters, it matters to me because I want you to have the things that you've asked prayer for. 
You've, you're the ones that have asked prayer for peace, patience, love, kindness, for all those things in your life. And I want you to have those things. And I think that maybe there's somebody in here that I hope will consider the truth that we're talking about today and think to yourselves, you know what? I want that, and here's how I get that. I want you to go to work on Monday morning feeling more peace than you've ever felt. I want you to feel more kindness than you've ever felt. I want you to love more and harder and more authentic than you've ever been able to love. This is why I think that this matters to you. Because if, if, if you don't have Jesus, then it's exhausting. And it's hard to do those things. And you feel like you're just fighting the rat race. And something can always take your joy, can always take your love, can always take your, your, your kindness and your patience. I want you to have un stealable, untakeable fruits of the Spirit. This is why this matters. And so Jesus, when he says he's the vine, he's the great vine. And the Greek lexicon kind of breaks this down, a vine that produces fruit. Not just any vine, but one that produces fruit. Now, there's two kinds of vines. You've got this one that produces fruit. But you also have like a jungle vine or as we call it, uh, a wait-a-minute vine. This is a vine that you would wait a minute before you uh, deal with. Let me tell you a, a quick story here. When I was 16, I was driving, and I was given a job, which now just seems crazy to think that my parents gave me a vehicle, and uh, I had my driver's license, and they were like, here you go, you know, off you go. And so I had a job in the summertime working for a, a construction company, and what would happen is I would go to a house, and they would give me a big sledgehammer and a crowbar, and they would have me go in and rip all the cabinets out of the kitchen. So I just thought it was the greatest job in the world. Pick up that hammer and just whack. And, you know, I didn't have to be clean. I didn't have to be careful because the guy was, was renovating the houses. And so I would go in and rip all the cabinets. One day, he comes and says, okay, I need you to meet me at this different house. And at this house was a chain link fence. Now, here, you guys are known for your fences, but I, I don't know if you have a chain link fence. Do we understand a chain link fence? Okay, nobody. So I should have brought a picture for you. So what it is, it's usually a fence about this high or this high, and it's got a crisscross kind of pattern in it, and, uh, and it's made of metal, and so it looks like chain. You know, it looks like chain links, like you would see in armor. And what, it hap what happens around that is when it's neglected, a lot of times a vine will grow through it. And all those little wires and all those little holes, the vine goes through. And what was happening is a wait-a-minute vine was growing, a jungle vine was growing. So when I got in there to pull all the vines off the fence, because my job was to clean the fence, I started pulling all those vines off. And as I'm pulling them off, it's summertime, it's sweaty, I'm taking my glasses off, I'm wiping my forehead, I'm you know, scratching the back of my neck, I'm wiping the sweat off my arms. You know, I, I even think maybe I had like an itch on my bottom, so I gave a little scratch there, you know. And guess what those vines were? Poison ivy. Poison ivy. I was covered in poison ivy. Like head to toe, it was moving into my eyes, it was all over my forehead. I looked like somebody that had, you know, a, a, if, if I had been around the Israelites, they would have put me outside the city walls because they were like, unclean, unclean, you'd be out there. But that is a wait a minute vine because I was supposed to, wait a minute, I'm not going to touch that vine. Jesus is not a wait a minute vine. The thing about these jungle vines is these jungle vines, these wait a minute vines, they actually, uh, the purpose is to distract you. The poison ivy distracted me from everything in life. Also, these jungle vines, when they grow around trees, they suffocate the tree. When they grow around plants in your garden, they suffocate the plant. They grow over them and they block them from the sun. They're, they're meant to, to overtake and to consume everything that they get access to. And that's not the vine that Jesus is, but there is one that roams this earth that is that vine. And it wants your life so badly. It wants to crawl in there and crawl around your heart. And crawl around your capacity for love. And that jungle vine wants to just encapsulate that and prevent anything else from getting to it. Some of us have let jungle vines grow. But Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm a vine that's guaranteed to produce fruit. That's Jesus' role. It's a fruit-producing vine. And God's desire for you is that you produce and you bear much fruit. So that's Jesus' role. 
Now, we have a role. We have an identity. Remember, Jesus gave himself an identity. He's the vine. Your identity is that we are the branches. So let me show you where this is in Scripture here. In John 15, 4, this verse here that I'm going to kind of teach off of for you guys for just a second. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear, everyone say bear, bear. fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. We see this word abide in here a bunch. Here's what abide means. It means to stay put for a long period of time. And then the connotation to it, the context, it means to stay put for a long period of time, even though it's hard or there's suffering. So Jesus is saying, abide in me, stay put, stay in my presence, come into my presence and stay there. Abide in me and I in you. It's like Jesus he knocks, on your, knocks on the door of your heart. Hey, can I come in? Hey, can I spend time with you? Hey, can I talk to you? Hey, you matter to me and I love you. That's, that's what Jesus is doing right there. So when we abide in Him, we stay in His presence. And when we abide in Him, we reflect His presence. Some of us are reflecting the wrong presence. When we abide in our computer screens with pornography on it, we start to reflect that in our thinking. When we abide in, when we stick around, when we stay in the presence for a long time of people that are negative or bad influences, we start to imitate them. So I I think what you should do is you should decide what character traits you want to show. And you want to show peace, love, kindness, patience, joy. And so if that's what you want to produce and to show in your life, then just maybe you should spend some time with the guy whose job, whose desire, whose making is to help you to produce that fruit. Now the word bear here, bear means to carry. So if you're abiding in Christ, he's piling fruit onto your arms. This idea of carrying fruit. And the the thing about this is that this fruit is good, it tastes good, it looks good, it's beautiful fruit. When you bear fruit, people see that. And people see it and they even can taste from it. You're walking around, you're bearing fruit, and and you can't carry it on your own. You just can't. You can't bear fruit on your own, which means you can't bear fruit without Christ. You have to bear fruit with Christ while you're abiding with Him. You know why? Because we all don't, no one has biceps big enough to carry the fruit of Jesus. So we need Jesus' biceps. So He helps us to carry that fruit. People see it, they taste of it. And then they want what you have. They want the fruit. That means you're a positive influence. That means you're spreading the fruits of the Spirit. Let's walk around and give people fruit. Now, this, this fruit that we're talking about in Galatians 5, this, this is what it is here. I've been talking about it, but I want you to understand it. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. What long-suffering is, is that's the patience. Not patience while you're waiting to pull into... Uh, the Howard Center parking lot by the Woolworths, and somebody is taking forever to swipe their hand and get the little card out. Patience is about what you do while you're waiting. Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. There's no limit to these things right here. Jesus made you so that you can have this. God wants you to bear much fruit. God has called you to do all things through Christ who strengthen you. And His purpose for you is to bear much fruit. This is here for you. All you have to do, all we have to look at here is these these roots. We take care of these roots. So now we've got the last part to this. You have Jesus as the vine, and then you have us as the branches. And I, I quickly want to just explain the Father is the vine dresser. Now, what this means here is the father is the owner. So he owns the, the, he owns the, the orchid field. He owns the wine field. He owns the vine. He owns the branches. We're all here because of God. We're all made in the image of God. We all get the option to choose to love God. Let me show you where this is in Scripture. Again, I, just, I want you to know that I'm not making this stuff up. I am the true vine, and my father, this is Jesus, is the vine dresser. He's the owner. Now Jesus is, is teaching his disciples this. So let's all pretend that we're, we're Jesus' disciples. 
And the great news is that a lot of people listening to Jesus' parables, they didn't believe in him. So if you're somebody that doesn't believe in Christ, hey, that's okay. Welcome. I'm not here to put pressure on you, but I am hoping that I spark an interest in you so that you say, you know what? I kind of would like some more peace. And kind of what I'm doing is not working. It's not working out anymore. So here's the parable that Jesus tells. We can all relate to this here. Now we've got it on the screens for you. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who's God. Because God's the vine dresser. He planted a vineyard and he put a wall around it and he dug a wine press in it and he built a tower. And he rented it out to tenant farmers. That's the Israelites. And by default, that's us. Israelites and, and us. And he went on a journey to another country. Then in verse uh, 34, when the harvest time approached, he sent his servants. His servants were the prophets, those that were coming. Now maybe you could say, you know, pastors or preachers or uh, people that work for a church or whatever. But he sent his prophets, his servants, to the tenants to get his share of the fruit. But the tenants took his servants, beat one, killed another, and he stoned a third. Again, he sent another servant more than the first time. And they treated them the same way. They were beaten. They were killed. Now, in verse 37, finally, he sent his own son. You know, Jesus is telling this parable seven days before he's hung on the cross. He knows that he's going to the cross. So he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son and have regard for him. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This man is the heir of the owner. Come on, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took the son, they threw him out of the vineyard, and they killed him. You know what? When they threw him out of the vineyard, Jesus was thrown, he was crucified outside the city walls. And that's where he was killed. So now here's a verse that can be very hard. But with this verse, you guys have a choice. In verse 40, now when the owner of the vineyard comes back, what will he do with you? with those tenants. I've got two options for you. Option number one is, if you don't know Jesus, then you have the chance to accept the vine. You've got the chance today to change the entire trajectory of your life. Stop being embarrassed. Stop being shamed. Stop being fearful. Stop stop trying to hold up a facade of my life is fine, my life is okay. Today is the day where you can change the trajectory of your life and the trajectory of your eternity. Because when God comes, when this time of accountability comes to us all, what happens with you? And so when we say a prayer here in a second, you get the opportunity to this. If you have bad fruit, it's because Jesus is not your root. And even with bad fruit, I'm not saying that you're a bad person. I'm saying that maybe you're trying to take care of your roots, but you're taking care of them the wrong way and with the wrong stuff. And you just can't get the fruit to grow. If you can't get the fruit to grow, maybe you've got bad roots. Maybe you need to know Jesus. Now, for those of you that do know Christ, here's your choice. If you know Jesus, you've got a choice to abide and bear. Some of you need to stop abiding, staying close for long periods of time to other people or other things. And you need to make a decision that I'm going to abide in Jesus. Meaning, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hang out with him. I'm going to get in his presence every day. I'm going to spend time staying put. It doesn't mean that you hang out with Jesus and you talk to him and you have an amazing conversation and you pray like crazy and you worship with your hands up. No, abide means to just stay put. Because he says, if you abide in me and I in you, if you stay put with Jesus long enough, he'll do the work in you. So you have the option today to abide and bear. Now, I want to explain something to you. When we ask you to do these things, this is essentially what it means here. For those that are considering this, we're saying, this is what we're saying to you. At some point in all of our lives, we have to transfer our trust away from what we think we can control and into what Jesus did, which is out of our control. It's no longer about what I can do, It's about what he was done. Please surrender your efforts for what you can do. I can do. I can do. I can fix this. I can fix this. I can be better. I can quit this. I can overcome this. I can find joy. I can tend to this stuff. Just surrender that. 
and accept what Jesus has already done for you. And so I'm going to lead us in a prayer right now. It's not a complicated prayer. The purpose of this prayer is just to give you guidance. There's no magic in the words here. But some of us, we don't know how to come to Jesus. We don't know how to give our life to Him. And so that's what this prayer is for. So this time, I would ask that you bow your heads, close your eyes. And if you want to pray this prayer and you're a visual learner like me, you can open your eyes and you can look up. But I'm going to pray this prayer with us. And if you want this for your life, just pray this in your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner. I know my sin should separate me from you forever. I believe your son, Jesus, died for me. I accept his death as payment for my sin. Thank you for loving me and for giving the gift of Jesus so I can live with you in heaven. Come into my life and be my Savior and friend. In Jesus' name, amen.